Justin, do you want to go give a quick shout out to the media room that we're, they're on their way? <clears throat> Thank you. Happy Saturday. We're gonna, hi, welcome back. No, we're going to take a quick, we're going to have a pause for a second. We're going to round some people. Okay, great. All right, well, we've got folks that are um, heading in to join us here for our first press conference of the day. Let me run through a couple quick uh, logistical items. Again, if you haven't done so already, let's go ahead and uh, turn off or mute your electronic devices. Nobody wants to be that person. Uh, Digital Media Hub, the NCA has that up and running. We'll have quotes from ASAP Sports in there, as well as video provided by Hammond Communications. Unless you are with the team, there is no video uh, allowed in here. Um, you may take photos. The way we are going to uh, roll with today's press conference is I'm going to do introductions of our five starters here, and then we are gonna take questions. We will take questions not only from inside the auditorium, but we do have Zoom um, capabilities as well, so make sure when we start that uh, you let us know your have a question, we'll get you the microphone. Give us your name and affiliation and who your question is for. Um, if you are joining us from uh, Zoom, please make sure you use the raise hand function if you have a question. So after all of that, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Creighton student athletes. We have Tatum Rembau, Peyton Brodsky, Lauren Jensen, Carly Batchelor, and Emma Ronsick. We'll take our first questions. Start right over here on the aisle. Off to our right. Uh, for Tatum, I'm curious about deciding to come back for this fifth year and what it meant to you and for everyone else. What does Tatum's leadership and experience bring to this team? Um, it was a pretty easy decision to come back. Obviously, I, last year was pretty difficult for a lot of different people, and I struggled with injuries just back to back to back. So I decided really early on to come back, and all the credit to my strength coach and our athletic trainer. They really put me through it this last summer, just making sure that my body was as healthy as it could be. Take our next question from over here on the left in the third row. Uh, this is for anyone who wants to answer. I guess Tatum, Tatum might be the right person to ask, but um, you guys kind of run people into each other a lot, like Morgan did that. I'm guessing Morgan's right behind me. Um, <laughs> Morgan did that a lot yesterday. Uh, is that a conscious effort to get defenders to run into each other and kind of use them as screens? Yes and no. Um, I think it's just 
kind of part of our offense, um, the motion. We have a lot of freedom, like I said yesterday. Um, and, you know, Morgan, Lauren, Emma, they're going to have types of players that are going to hug them. Um, so back cutting just happens to be their best option sometimes. We come down here in front or to our left, second row. Ellie French with KUTV. Um, I read that someone jumped in the stands after the win. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was one of you guys or if they're in this room, but uh, if it was one of you guys, just the decision to do that or what you saw from that. Emma, it looks like you're going to go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was Rachel Saunders. She's right there. <laughs> I don't know what was going through her head when she did that, but... <laughs> Next question. We're going to go right down here to the front, our right, <coughs> second row. Hey there, Pete Iacobelli with the Associated Press. Um, Peyton, how do you see this matchup? Do you see it as a, you know, an insurmountable hill, or is what you've done already, you know, enough proof that that you guys, you know, deserve to be here and can play with anybody? Yeah, I think, we, I think what we've done already proves that we can be here. Um, it's obviously a tough task, but I think we're, we can trust in our preparation, um, our coaching, and just the faith and confidence that we have in each other to be ready for this game tomorrow. Take our next question, run row, one row back on our right. <clears throat> Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Um, Lauren, I guess for you, Obviously, a lot of us are just kind of getting to know the stories of all of you because, um, you know, you're in the national spotlight. I'm curious. I know you transferred. What was it about Creighton that made you choose to, to come here? And if anyone else wants to kind of share <laughs> what made them kind of choose this school and choose this program, I'm very curious. Lauren, let's start with you. Um, yeah, coming out of high school, they recruited me, and I had a good relationship with the coaches. Um, I played with Mallory Brake, um, Molly Mogensen is also from Minnesota, um, and Temi Sarda from last year played in my high school, so I was really familiar with the program, um, and I just felt comfortable. I knew the culture was great, and I liked the style of offense, and so it just seemed like the right fit. Emma? Yeah, I mean, I just knew that this was a school for me when I was being recruited in high school. I was recruited by some of the local schools in South Dakota, but I just knew I wanted to get away, and this was the perfect fit for me. Carly? Um, I think the chemistry that all the teams at Creighton have is so special, and it really carries over year to year. I think this year, I mean, just how far we've come is just a testament to how close we are and just the amazing teammates and people and friends that I'll have for life that um, make basketball fun, but also are just so great off the court as well. Peyton? Yeah, I chose Creighton um, because it's like 20 minutes from my hometown. Um, so obviously, you no, know, I wanted to stay close to home, but it was ultimately the people that brought me there. Um, college basketball is crazy being recruited for all this time, so I got to meet a lot of people and see a lot of different places, but um, the people at Creighton were what ultimately drew me there in making my decision. Tatum. Um, just echoing what everyone else has said, the community and the people and just the fan base that Creighton draws um, really is the reason why I chose Creighton. Go back over here to the third row on our left. I should have introduced myself. I'm Gabe Ebream, my group stats. Um, so I don't think like South Carolina is going to come out here with their whole team. And it seems you guys are really together, and you guys have all talked about that. I was just wondering if you guys have, like, have any specific stories you could share with us just to illustrate how together this team is. Peyton, we're going to let you start. Oh, gosh. Um, I think something <laughs> – this is not really basketball-related, but um, we have a trip planned in May to Florida, and <laughs> literally the whole roster is going, the whole entire team. Um, <laughs> That's something that we planned probably like two months ago, so it's been in the works, but it just shows that like we really do enjoy being around each other um, on the court, but also off the court, and I think that contributes to our success. Anybody else have anything they want to add? Or does that one take the cake? I can, I can. I'll say something. Go ahead, Tatum. Um, just even the story of them wanting to come in here, um, there was like three or four of them They were like, oh, can we go watch this press conference? And, Five of us are like, oh my gosh, like what is this gonna entail? Um, but it really just goes to show that we love being around each other and we love supporting each other. We're gonna take our next question from the far left on the aisle, about five rows back. 
Hi, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. For um, Tatum and Peyton as the veterans uh, up there, what is it about this team in particular, whether it's chemistry, the way you guys have come together, that is different from the other teams you've been on that have allowed you to get to this point? Go ahead, Tatum. It's the youth and it's the energy. Um, every single day, everyone comes to practice with such a smile on their face and just ready to get after it. And you know, it makes it a lot easier for us seniors to come to practice and be excited about coming to practice every day as well. Peyton? Yeah, I think we have a really good balance of young talent and then also older and wise leadership. Um, our three leading scores are sophomores, which is kind of crazy. You don't see that every single day, but I think it comes with um, the bond that we have with those girls and the trust that we have in them to make plays when it's needed. Um, and then just using me and Tatum's and even like Carly's leadership and experience that we've had throughout our three and four years playing for this program really helps a lot. Take our next question, standing in the aisle. Hi, this is for uh, Tatum and Emma. I'm wondering if the energy, the dynamic, if anything changes at this point, because the first three wins in the tournament, you advance to the next round. <laughs> now we're talking about going to the final four. Does it, does it feel any different at this moment? Tatum? Um, I would say no, it doesn't feel any different. Um, I know for me personally, the next game could always be my last game, and I'm not ready for the next game to be my last game. Yeah, I mean, it's just all a surreal feeling that we've made it this far, and we've had um, this belief in ourselves the whole season. We knew that we could prove everyone that this is where we belong, and we don't want the season to be over for the seniors, and especially just because we've had uh, such a great season, and we don't want to be done hanging out with each other in this team. So we just want to keep going as long as we can. We're going to go next here, right in the middle. Hi, uh, Remy with the New York Times. Um, yesterday, your coach just said you guys play a little bit different than everyone. Um, how would you describe your playing style, and how do you think it um, benefits you in this tournament? Carly, let's start with you. Um, well, first off, you look at a lot of teams, and there's usually someone above 6'2 or 6'3, <laughs> and clearly we don't have that. Um, we're probably averaging around a 5'8 height between all of us, so <laughs> I think that's pretty unique of teams that have made it thus far. Um, I think, but I also think that's a strength of ours, is being able to just be so... Um, such a five-out team and not having to rely on size and just everybody being able to shoot and cut and score, I think it makes um, our motion offense so fluid and just makes it easier for us to all get involved. All right, we're going to take our next question from right down here in the very front. Rick Henry, WDS TV, Columbia, South Carolina, and this is for anyone who wants to tackle it. When you look at Aaliyah Boston, what is the most challenging thing about her when you look at how you're going to defend her? Emma, we're going to start with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely her size and her strength, and obviously being um, shooting such a high percentage um, from the field. Like, she's just a big body, and it's going to be a challenge for us because we are, like Carly said, we aren't, we're a little undersized in the. Um, center category, I would say. <laughs> but, you know, we just got to believe in each other and just tackle it. Carly, you want to chime in? Um, I mean, Aaliyah Boston is a phenomenal player. There's not much more to be said about that. Obviously, she's super talented and um, has gotten her team to this point. So I think, you know, the biggest thing for us is just limiting offensive rebounds and just trying to uh, pack the paint as well as we can and uh, you know, keep her off the boards. Take our next question back on the aisle to our far left. Just echoing on some of the themes that we've touched on for Emma and, and Tatum, when you guys are different than most other teams in the tournament left, you don't have a superstar who's leading the team every single night in, in scoring. You're a true team. How does that dynamic work when you know that on any given night it can be somebody different who's stepping up to lead the way? Start us off, Tatum. Um, I think it makes it really difficult for teams to scout us because obviously when you have a team that has like one or two dynamic scores, you're going to put your best defenders on them. Um, so then when you have a team like us who there could be four or five different scores, it's kind of hard to pick and choose who you're going to put your best defenders on. Emma? Yeah, I mean, basically just what Tatum said. It's hard to guard us when you don't know who's going to be the one, uh, the go-to girl that night. Obviously, Morgan had a great game yesterday, 
and it's not like Iowa State didn't know that she was a great shooter and a great player, but they just can't have enough um, defenders to guard everyone on our team. So I think that's really hard to scout. I'm going to come back over here, third row on the right. Yeah, just wondering, obviously you had a very late, the game ended very late tonight. It was a quick turnaround to even just be here. But what have those last 12 hours looked like? Um, what has been the response? Um, have your phones been overflowing? And has it sunk in at all? And were you able, sorry, and a billion questions, but were you able to sleep <laughs> any? <laughs> Lauren, we're going to start with you. Um, you know, it's definitely a late night. Um, just that excitement of making it to the Elite Eight. Um, it was definitely hard to fall asleep last night. And, um, you know, obviously there's still excitement there, um, being less than 12 hours removed from the game. But um, I think we're all locked in and ready to take on South Carolina. Carly? You know, nothing a little melatonin won't fix. So. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, you got anything? Yep, melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to come back down here to the front, second row on our right. Pete at, uh, at the AP. You know, this time of year it always comes up about the makeup of uh, coaches for women's basketball teams. Obviously, you have a good thing going with uh, Coach Flan there. Does it make a difference whether a man or a woman coaches a women's team for anybody who'd like to try and tackle it. Tatum, let's start with you, and we are going to go all the way down. Um, Flan's amazing. Um, he's really good at the X's, o, X's and O's, and our assistants are really good at the communication, and they're younger, so they're able to relate to us a little bit more. So I think that balance is really good for us to be able to trust in Flan, but also trust in our assistant coaches. Peyton? Yeah, just echoing on the balance that we have in our coaching staff, um, Flan always says they don't come to him, me, is what he says when we have problems. Um, we go to our assistant coaches, um, the women on our team that we can relate to that have been in our position um, more recently, but Flan is the by far the smartest basketball coach I've ever played for. Um, the way we scout, the way we put our time into the opponents that we're playing um, is all him. And I think that that is why we're able to win the games that we have won. Lauren? Um, yeah, I don't think it really makes much of a difference. Um, kind of like Peyton and Tatum said, um, there's just a lot of balance on the coaching staff. Uh, Flan is a great leader, and he knows what he's doing basketball-wise. He knows a lot, and he's super wise. Carly? Yeah, not to sound like a broken record, but I uh, think that there is a really good balance between uh, Flan and then our younger assistant women coaches. I think I, my entire basketball career, I've mostly been coached by <coughs> men as coaches, so I don't really know much different, but I think that having our assistant coaches, um, just knowing that they're in the same position as we were, and just having that um, wisdom about them and experience makes it all the more, you know, able to come to them about anything and just talk about basketball or life, so. Emma? Yeah, I don't think it really matters when you have a coaching staff like ours. I mean, obviously, <laughs> um, everyone has so much respect for Flan and what he's done, and he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's talking about, and he's gotten us this far. And then we also have a really good friendship relationship with other coaches, and we respect them on and off the court. They're our friends off the court, but then they know how to do their jobs, and they do them well when we're on the court. So that's why we have a lot of respect for them. Question right here back in the middle, third row. You guys have a big game tomorrow. Can you take us a little bit through what's going to go through your mind in the morning, what, what, a, what your morning preparation will look like, how are you going to center yourself? Emma, we're going to start with you, and we're going to come back down the row. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of we can't get too high or too low. Obviously, this is going to be a tall task, and it, South Carolina is obviously a really good team. They're a very talented team, well coached. Um, but we just have to stay within ourselves and believe that we can do it. Carly? Yeah, I mean, at this point, every team that we're playing is really good. It's just the seating that's different. So I think just trying to keep that mindset of, you know, we made it this far. You know, why not us? So, Lauren? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
I feel like we've done a good job so far of just like staying within us and not trying to let the outside noise or just like the pressure of the big games get to us and just um, play our game. And so I feel like that will be really key for us tomorrow. Peyton? Yeah, I think our past two games have been really good experience leading up into these games. Um, we've never played in front of a 15,000 sold out crowd until we played at Iowa and then even the atmosphere last night. Um, I think that will just take our momentum into the game tomorrow and we're, we'll be ready. Tatum, the last word's yours. Um, I think the preparation for tomorrow morning is staying loose and having confidence in ourselves, but also preparing ourselves and knowing that we deserve to be in that game. That takes us right to 125. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Amazing. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
You know, I, I really don't have um, much of a connection. I mean, I've followed her since she got in at Temple and the, the job that she's done. At, I mean, she did a really good job at Temple and, you know, just how quickly she built South Carolina, both from a competitive standpoint and from a um, interest standpoint. I mean, they kind of ascend, you know, it's one thing to get good and then later have the, the, the kind of interest in the program that they've had, but I, my kind of view from afar is that, is that she built it kind of simultaneously, which I think is, is, is a credit to her and because I think she, you know, my, again, my view from afar is that she kind of gets the whole picture. She's not just a, a coach or a recruiter or whatever. She gets the, you know, how, how does putting, you know, 15,000 people in the building help us. How does that help us recruit? And so she's done the whole thing. I know she's really good in the community. Um, and, and she's, a, you know, one of the most prominent voices in our sport, which is a reflection of what she's built. Third row yeah. over here on our left. Uh, uh, Gabe Ibrahim, J247. Congrats, Coach, on, on getting here. Um, you know, so your whole team was in this press conference like five minutes ago. Uh, you know, they. We always talk about chemistry, and I think we kind of separate it from the chess match of basketball. I was just wondering how those two things interact and like how has the chemistry of this team helped you prepare for games? Yeah, I think that's the magic of right if we if we knew exactly what you know what kind of uh, fraction of success is related to chemistry versus x's and O's and skills and all that stuff we'd you know we'd have a We'd, we'd patent that formula. So I, I do think our, our chemistry and our, our, the joy that our team plays with and the, the way that they care about each other plays into, has played into our success this year. Um, and, uh, you know, I always struggle with cause and effect is are we, are we playing with joy because we're playing well or are we playing well because we're playing with joy? And there's obviously room for <laughs> both. Uh, to to assign cause and effect to both of those, but I do feel like that's a that's a big part of it. I've had a lot of people comment on how much fun we seem to have when we play, and um, I think that's been a part of our our success and why we're here. We're going to take <clears throat> our next question from the aisle, standing up. Hi, Flan. Uh, curious about the process of playing two games in three days. Obviously, you had a ton of success last weekend. You have this day in between games. How do you manage your time, maybe compared to how you manage the team's time, in trying to put yourself in the, the best position tomorrow night? Yeah, that's that's a good question because I do feel like it's, you know, it's it's a physical exhaustion that you're going to have coming out of a game that doesn't get over until close to midnight. Um, but I think the mental exhaustion of the last, like I said, eight or nine days too. You got to be careful. Um, not to put too much on their plate today and tomorrow. I'm glad the game is a little later. I mean, I think <laughs> I usually like games that are earlier because I don't like to sit around all day. But I think in this case, it's a it's a good thing for us that it's a later game based on how late we were there last night. So we won't we won't do a lot of live stuff today. I mean, looking at our how much we went through, and I know our players are gonna ice bath and you know need the time to do that and you know and spend some time with their family tonight and but you know I think you kind of you know at this time it's it's more the mental so we'll we'll watch a little bit more film and and because we have very little time really or don't want to put the energy into the physical prep so it's just a little bit more film and and making sure that we have a a pretty tight game plan put together Far left on the aisle. Hi, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com. I have a two-part question. First, I'm wondering whether it means more as an alum to be here on this historic run for your school. And related to that, I'm wondering how you made the decision to get on the women's side and start coaching women's basketball essentially right after your playing days were done. <laughs> uh, you're generous uh, calling my playing days playing days. Let me, let me tell you a quick story. My, uh, I have a son who's 12, and we were, when we were about six, 
he, we were at the playground and he was playing with a kid who was about his age. And as six-year-olds do, they kind of brag about their relatives. And so this other kid was bragging about his dad. And um, so my son Jackson's like, well, my dad wasn't very good in high school or college, but he's really good now. <laughs> and I was like 50. <laughs> so <laughs> I think now that he's a little older, he has a better sense that his dad's not that good now. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the first part about, you know, I don't know any different. I, I've been at Creighton pretty much forever, so I, I, sometimes you struggle to answer that question because I don't, I don't really know what it would be like to coach somewhere other than where I went to school. So I, I can tell you it means a lot, and it's, it's, you know, on the days where it's maybe a little bit more of a struggle, it's, it's easier to be invested because it is your alma mater. And so I think that's maybe how I would answer that is that it, it you know, you, you let things slide um, maybe a little bit more um, that, that could be irritating because you just, you, you have a belief that where you are is, is, is the right place to be and it's, it's the right place to, or it's a great place for young women to have the opportunity to play basketball and grow up. And I got into the women's game. Um, this is, again, I, I was on the college golf team at Creighton. So my college golf coach my last two years was Bruce Rasmussen, who was at that time the women's basketball coach. And so that's real, that was my ticket in. I was, you know, I kind of went, I didn't know that I would coach. I kind of wanted to go to law school. Um, I was weird and majored in philosophy. Um, and was, so was kind of, you know, tracking toward that. And I just couldn't pull the trigger. And I did some, I, I volunteered for Bruce right out of college. And, and uh, because of my relationship with him, and that's kind of how I got into the women's game. So um, was that both of your questions? Yeah. Yep. OK, thanks. We're going to go over here to the right third row. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. You know, you've been head coach now for 20 years, and I would just wonder, like, did you think you were going to get here to the lead eight? Like, was this something that was a bucket list item for you? Was something that you would have felt disappointed if you had never, never gotten here? And what does it mean to get here with this group? Yeah, I think, I mean, first of all, I think our, our entry into the Big East helped elevate our program and our potential. I think the resources were, I, I think we were, we were, we were becoming more resourced, you know, and as we got late into the days in our Missouri Valley, um, and that's, I think, why we were, as an institution, attractive to the Big East, um, but I think it's helped elevate our recruiting and our um, and our ability to train with, we have a practice facility now that we, you know, that's much better and we have an on-campus arena and um, that uh, makes more sense for our sport than what we were playing in. And so I think there, there's been some headway made that probably made me think this was more achievable. And then I think, you know, not to give Kirsten, our volleyball coach, too much credit, but she's, she's set a really high bar. I mean, I've officed next to Kirsten, she's been our volleyball coach for 19 years, and she's, they've won like 10 straight Big East championships, and been to, I guess that we've only been in the league nine, so maybe nine. Um, but she's, she's a dreamer, and, and I think, you know, her influence in terms of what is achievable has, has played with me to some degree, and, um, and helped me maybe feel like the bar can, should, and can be higher, and then like I said, I think with the Big East helping um, us recruit a little bit better player, that's been part of it. And then you got to be a little lucky, right? You got to you got to win a game, maybe that you're not supposed to win, or that uh, or more than one. And um, but with this team, I'm I'm not surprised as I look back. But if you know when you when we started the year. Um, you know, I knew we were pretty sophomore heavy in terms of where our scoring and our production was going to come from. So I knew we'd be good, but I'd, I wasn't quite sure it'd be this soon. 
I'm going to go right down here in the very front. Rick Henry, WSTV, Columbia, South Carolina. When you look at uh, Aaliyah Boston, what's the biggest challenge when it comes to preparing how you're going to defend her? Well, we, we have to limit her second chance points and her ability to, to control the game on the offensive glass. I mean, that's the biggest thing. And, and uh, you know, so we're going to have to gang rebound. I mean, we will not, I mean, I will, in the huddle, I will be talking about whether we're doing a good job of having five people on the defensive glass or whether we're not. And if we, if we are, we still may not be successful because she's just that big and strong and, and, and good around the basket. But, you know, and we're going to have to, we're going to have to cheat some off their perimeter players. I mean, to, to help onto her and, and give some post to post help. I mean, that's, we don't, we can't guard her one on one, and we can't rebound one on one against her. So, uh, you know, and we've got to, we've got to rotate our posts so that they're fresh enough. Because there's, you know, it's there's two types of conditioning: running up and down, and getting tired running up and down. And then there's just leaning against somebody who's bigger and stronger than you, and that's that takes a lot out of you too. So we can't be playing our posts when they're tired and can't, you know defend in a way that that's even worse than when they're fresh so those are those are some challenges but um you know she's a good free throw shooter we can't give her and ones i mean if we if she's got a layup we can't give her three we got to just give her two so a lot of a lot of a lot of challenges uh but we you know the other thing is we got to make her work on on the other end and we we you know she's gonna have to she's gonna have to go out and guard on the perimeter at some point and i think that can be a way to to drive down her efficiency is you know we, we you know I look at Sonano in our Iowa game you know she she missed her last three shots well she had to guard our motion offense um, for three and a half quarters and and you know I think if if you know one of our philosophies is if if we have elite posts that we're playing against we want to try to wear them down on the on uh, our offensive end. We're going to take three more questions before we let you go. We're going to start right here on the corner. Pete from the AP again. Uh, Jim, this time of year, the topic always comes up about men coaching women, whether more women should be coaching women. And I know it's your life's work, and you're pretty yeah. successful at it. Where do you stand on those who say maybe there should be more women, or do you believe you're teaching women to become future basketball coaches? Yeah, I mean that. I think it's hard because it does seem like if I answer in the way that I maybe feel that I'm being self-serving. I mean, I'll tell you this: like I, I mean, my my kids are in elementary school and they're taught by women, and I consider teaching a leadership position, and I don't have any problem with <laughs> with them being taught uh, by women. I, we haven't. My kids haven't had through elementary school did not have one male teacher other than I think music or PE and so um, I think that's somewhat somewhat relevant but uh, yeah I mean I, I we need to do everything we can to have women coach women but I think there's you know I, I applaud the people who have who have added women to uh, men's coaching staff uh, men's coaching staffs you know one of the one of the players in our league Georgetown uh, Milan Bolden Morris was just hired by Jim Harbaugh to to coach quarterbacks, and I think that's awesome. So I think I think we're headed down that road a little bit, not nearly as quickly as it needs to happen. But I do feel like you know you've seen a lot of NFL staffs add females and NBA staffs add females. So I think we're hopefully we're getting to the point where that's more the norm, and and then we don't have to maybe talk quite as much about there are men coaching women. Next question over here on our far left aisle, second row. Lynn, uh the girls just seem like they're having so much fun and just you guys all as a team seem like it. Why is it so important to have fun during this time, especially when it comes to tournament time, and how much importance from a standpoint does that translate to just the play on the court? Yeah. I th you know, I've been described as an Irishman with a temper or a bit of a temper. 
Um, and I'm not always great about uh, the way I display it, but we do talk a lot about joy, and, and I try to um, get them to understand that that's a, a big part of being successful, and that's why you do it, right? I mean, you, um, and, uh, you know, we, we kind of say, don't, don't kick the joy out of it. Keep, it. keep it in there. And, you know, at some point when, you be, when you're a kid and you play, okay, it's play. And then, and then all we talk about is, well, you got to work at it. You know, it's, it's work and it's work. And, it's, and then to me, the, the, the best thing that you can have is that synthesis of viewing it as both play and work. And, um, again, if, you, if, it's, if all you focus on is the work and not the play, it's... And, and that's why I think, you know, our style of play is we let them play. Like, I mean, there were, that, that third quarter, I don't know that I called, really the second half, I mean, we didn't call almost anything from the bench. So they're, it's, uh, we're, we're trusting them a lot. And, you know, I asked them a couple times, hey, what do you want to do on that? What do you want to do on that action that Iowa State's running? What do you guys want to do? I have my ideas, but what do you want to do? And I think I try to empower them because I think that that's, you know, I think that's helpful too in creating that. Last question right here on our right side, about four rows back. Emma Bachelary, Sports Illustrated. Um, with that chemistry and the way that it manifests on the floor, I think one area that stands out is your assist game, you know, number one assisted shot rate in the country. What do you think is behind that and what do you think makes it hard to defend? Yeah. Well, I think first of all, we're, we're, we have shot makers. You can, you can have a lot of people who can throw good passes, but if the ball doesn't go in after the, after the good pass, uh, you don't get an assist for it. But uh, I think our kids do spend a lot of time in the gym, and then I just think there is a trust. And I think Tatum's, you know, has, has kind of generated that sort of mentality too with because she is a pass first point guard and I know she scored the ball last night, but that was a little bit of an atypical game for her. But, uh, and we've got, you know, we, we move well without the ball. And I think that's, that's important. And I know, you know, Tatum talked about last night after the game that, you know, our motion doesn't necessarily look good in, in June or September or October. Um, it takes a while, you know, especially if you're a younger player, but I do feel like it gives us a chance especially as the year goes and, and we become harder to scout because there aren't necessarily, you know, cookie cutter plays that we're, that we're running. It's, it's, it's more random action. And so I think it's harder to scout and therefore you, you know, it's harder for defense sometimes to take away that. And so if you are a good passing team, um, you know, those, those numbers show up with assists and, and uh, I think we are, I think we I think we shoot it well, but I think we're unselfish too. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you guys. See you tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thanks. That concludes our first set of press conferences for today. We will be back in here starting at uh, two fifteen for the five South Carolina starters, then transition into the coach. Um, I would encourage you to be a couple minutes early because that seems to be the norm. People get excited to come up here and spend time. <laughs>